The reason I'm doing this video today is because many of you guys have been asking me about this person that you found on the internet that's talking about Emery and many other people. So you guys wanted my opinion and I'm going to give it to you because I have had several conversations with this person and I do believe now that he is probably, possibly, kind of dangerous or at least there's a risk involved and so I want to tell you guys so you can be informed and not get uh, into a sticky situation with this person. Today we're going to be talking about our experience with this person, how we met, it's, it's directly related. So you want to start and let them know how we met and how you found me? Yeah, thanks a lot, Natasha. And you're, uh, you're absolutely right. We're not here to talk about other people or dox them or talk bad about someone. But unfortunately, we've been sucked into a situation that we there, we just have to speak up. That's for our safety, number one, and for other women that may that we've learned that are involved in this and it's turning um, we wanted to speak up for the truth and warn others. I found Natasha a, a few weeks back when my friends keep sharing Corey um, Good or Wilcock or Emery Smith videos and I keep asking questions, is this for real? And um, I typed in Emery Smith and here comes this um, older man, JM um, is his nickname, talks about exposing Emery Smith and I was shocked uh, that he was saying such terrible things uh, from embezzlement to um, threatening to kill his daughter. And I Googled again, seeing if there's other women or people that talk about this. And I found your video, Natasha, on other people or a particular person, I believe it was Corey Good, right? Yeah. Right. And as we, as um, I am new to this, so I reached out to, to N Natasha to ask her, uh, what, who is this person? Known all of a sudden, after all these years, JM claims to know Corey, uh, I'm sorry, Emery Smith for a long time, but w what is this? What is his motive? Who is this person talking about women being embezzled a woman being abused in this in this community that um, scared me and I reached out to you so hers was the first comment that I got regarding this situation um, she got me in touch with this dude he's not really advertising what his name is but when I started talking to him and when she started talking to him he gave us his supposed name but then again, are we really sure that's his name? I don't know. So he goes by the name John McKenzie, J-O-H-N McKenzie. Um, but his email address is some like cryptic uh, sock email, like JM and then a bunch of random numbers. So is his Twitter account. Like he's not really forthcoming about who he is, even though he's really good at telling everyone everyone else's business. So do we really know? So he claims to be Olivia's father. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know who Emery Smith is, Emery Smith was supposedly a super secret insider whistleblower that David Wilcock introduced to the world. Emery Smith supposedly used to work uh, on ET tissue samples and possibly corpses doing autopsies or whatever. Um, so this guy that we're talking about is supposedly Olivia's father. Olivia was Emery's girlfriend. They were not married, by the way. I'm not sure how the married thing came up, but in one of the videos, John says that Olivia is, uh, that they're, they were common law, but not actually married married. So Olivia, many people have seen Olivia at conferences with Emery and so on. This guy, John, says that he is Olivia's father, whether he is or not. I'm not sure if we have any actual proof. And so far, this guy hasn't really offered up much in terms of proof. And that's kind of part of the whole point of this. So Natasha and I kept uh, looking at videos by JM 
who claims that he has all this proof, all this evidence against Emory and others that he supposedly has the inside scoop on money, you know, monies that are stolen or laundered or embezzled. Uh, the, the more we uh, looked at the documents, the more we, they weren't really, you know, criminal documents and we have a lot of red flags came up and that's why we're making this video to warn others that this person has an alternative motive. Um, he dismisses women's questions about who he really is. We have proof of that in his comments and some a major, major red flags about why he, his motivation, JM's motivation for exposing Emory Smith. Yeah, so what happened was I received this comment from our guest, Victoria, and she uh, got me in touch with John. I started talking to John. I had uh, one conversation with him or a couple of emails, ex a couple of emails exchanged. Um, and after the first phone call, so first of all, I think we exchanged a couple of emails and then I saw comments on, on his videos from some people from the Dark Alliance situation. If you guys are up to date on that, I'm not going to get into it here. But uh, a few months ago, those people who were supposedly my friends and allies started harassing me. Whole another video. So I wanted nothing to do with them. And I saw they were obviously interested in what this guy had to say. They left a few comments on his videos. And I told John, listen, if you want to work with them, Godspeed, but I want absolutely nothing to do with them or anything that they're doing or whatever. I want nothing. I'm opting out. And he told me, oh, yeah, I've talked to them, but there's there's a weird energy there, and I don't really like them, and I would prefer to talk to you. Uh, and so, and I have screenshots of text messages that prove that this is what he was saying and like possibly emails or whatever so he was telling me like he was choosing me or whatever so shortly after that because he was like kind of i don't know making it a safer space for me to whatever to talk to him so i had a conversation with him that lasted like two and a half hours i intended to talk to him for like 10 minutes because i'm very busy and um, he just rambled on for like two and a half hours. Never like, I'm a really structured person. I really like to just get to the point. I like to know what my goal is and then actually achieve the goal. And I don't like um, wasting a bunch of time with conversations that go in like a million different directions when I have something else that I should be doing. So I had an objective for the call, like, are we going to be doing an interview? What is, you know, what do we want to accomplish here? And instead of him, like, confirming, okay, yeah, I'd love to come on your channel so that we could talk about my experience with Emery, because that was the point, right? So he has this channel where he's trying to expose Emery based on his own experiences with, with him, based, because supposedly Emery was dating his daughter. So I'm like, okay, cool, if you want to come chat on my on my channel, I'll give you the, the chance to come tell your story to people. And instead of saying yes and confirming a time and a date and getting it done, he went on and on and on of like random stuff and he kept turning everything around. And I, for, I think a lot of people who follow me, hopefully a lot of people who follow me follow me because they've experienced narcissistic abuse in their life. And so they will relate to this. Like when you're talking to them, they like suck you in and you don't even realize what's going on. And it's only afterwards when you think about it and you're like, what the hell just happened? So he's talking and talking and my spidey sense is tangling, but also it's like all these little triggers, like guilt triggers and stuff like that. He's pushing all these weird emotional buttons where I feel like I have to keep talking to him and I get sucked in. And because he, yeah, he, he made, he, I talked to him as well and he makes you feel like you're there to help him get this word out. Like you're doing a good thing. Right, right. 
he went a step further with me where instead of, because I'm, I'm like trying to get to the point, like, okay, how can I, well, this is a second conversation. Um, so after the first conversation, I'm like, what the hell just happened? Um, and there's stuff I'm probably forgetting that I'll get to, but the second conversation, I was like, okay, I really don't want to stay on the phone with him that long. I, and I told him, I'm like, listen, I have time at this time for like 20 minutes. And so how I texted him, how can I help you? Like, what can I do to support you? And he, instead of saying, well, I'd love to come on your channel. He texted me back some like emotional guilt trip about how I'm supposedly um, backing out of the collab. Okay. So the first conversation that we had went from him coming to talk to my, on my channel to now we're going to be partners and we're going to do this big collaboration project together. And we're going to like, and he was like trying to take over my business. It was like telling me how I'm supposed to operate my, my company and how I'm supposed to make my YouTube videos. Mm. And uh, I'm like, he wasn't even clear what, what this collab idea was, but now we're going to be collabing. And I, I, again, trying to get to the point, I'm like, well, what's your objective? Like, what are you trying to accomplish with this? Are you just trying to get the word out? Are you like trying to destroy Emery? Like, what is your objective? And he's like, connection, I guess. I just want to make friends. And what? not... <laughs> Not, not only that, but uh, all the people that have, we assume, that have reached out to him, he's, he's somewhat doxing them. He's sharing their information without people's permission. Yes, 100%. 100%. So can you imagine what happened, what happened to you? Didn't he share your, your info or? Oh, my God. The first, okay, so, so I... Um, he gave, so you commented on my video. I went to see his video. I left him a comment or something. He left his email address in a comment. I emailed his email address from my personal account. And like five seconds later, I get an email from you and you're like, John, give me your email address. I'm like, okay, you never asked me. <laughs> like what? He never asked me permission to give my email address out. I'm absolutely grateful that we met and that we're talking so I have no problem with that it's just like why are you giving people's contact information out without asking them and then so he did that and I'm just like okay okay like it's just my email address I guess whatever and then like a day later after I told him like I wanted nothing to do with the dark alliance people he so he's still asking me to be his like partner and he's like um, there's this Jeff guy and this Jeff guy wants to do an interview. And I was thinking you, me and him should all do an interview together. And I'm like, wait, which Jeff, this Jeff. And I showed him a screenshot uh, of a comment and he's like, yeah, that Jeff. And I'm like, I want nothing to do with him. I want nothing to do with any of them. Like I don't. And, um, he, so maybe a few hours later, the next day, he sent me a random email from Jeff. He forward me, forwarded me an email that Jeff sent him with Jeff's personal contact information, his full name, his phone number. I'm like, why would you do that? Like, I told you I don't like these people. I don't want anything to do with them. And you just like, what if I was, what if I was a terrible person that was, that wanted to screw this poor Jeff guy over and I, and now I have his contact information and I can dox him. I can like find out personal information about him. Like, why would you give me personal information from someone that I've already expressed to you that I don't like? Like, that's not right. I told him that he shouldn't do that. And he's like, the, ne the next sentence is like, I would never do that. I'm like, you literally just did twice what are you talking about? Right. And, and John, in all his videos, he blames the Wilcox, the Goods, the Emery's for starting drama. When in fact, what John is doing, he's sharing our emails, our phone numbers uh, to, with other people ha that have reached out to them. And when you, when people follow up with questions, who on the, on the YouTube, who are you, you know, um, 
what's your last name? Who are you? What, what's your email? He refuses to answer those questions. Yeah. So that brought up a big red flag for, uh, for us. And we wanted to let other people know that don't share your private information with this person because we're finding out he's, he's avoiding basic, logical, factual questions. Yeah, we don't even know if John McKenzie is his real name. We don't know where he lives because supposedly he was living in a car. Like his first bunch of videos, he was in his car. He said, I will always be doing videos in my car. And then suddenly he's not in his car anymore, which is weird. But he was in his car and now he's in like some random apartment or something. And so we don't know where he lives. We don't know if that's his real name. We don't know what his real email address is. We haven't seen any pictures of him with Olivia as far as I know. I don't even know if it, that's, if Olivia is his daughter. And I have his phone number, but I'm not <laughs> gonna dox him. He has my phone number, but I don't even know if it's a real phone number, you know, so. It could be a burner phone for all I know. I don't know. What's, uh, Natasha, what was your, um, some of the red flags that you saw besides, you know, doxing, sharing our emails with other people? What, uh, what's another red flag that kind of made you think, wow, who is this guy? And Okay, so I made a list. <laughs> I made a list. I made a list. Um, so... The first thing uh, that really got to me was that he reminds me of other two other people that I've um, experienced in my life that were complete psychos. They turned out to be cult leader type narcissist level stuff. And that's how I realized that there was like something here. Um, and that this guy is probably a communal narcissist, which we'll, we'll get to. I'll like tell you what the signs are and all that. Um, so yeah, he reminded me of this woman. I, I tell this story in one of my videos about this woman who brought me out into the middle of the forest and started a cult. And I was getting similar vibes from him with that, as well as an old roommate that I had. And she turned out to be a psycho as well. Um, and he is like this the male version of her it's it's insane so that was really like my point it was like telling me okay look into this further then there was the fact that he was trying to take over my business while i'm talking to him um just railroading the conversation and then after the second time i spoke to him he still knows nothing about me i haven't told him anything that i haven't said in public and he's like we're like family your family, you can tell me anything. You can call me anytime and tell me all your secrets. Um, With no. just, just met you, just spoke to you twice. Yeah, I met him two days before that. We had two conversations. And he's telling me that we're family. We're like family. And that I could tell him anything and call him anytime. That's crazy. That's not, that's a huge red flag. And, and guys... If you're listening to this and you're like, well, sometimes I meet people and I feel really connected to them. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I've known you forever. That's not the same as telling someone, you can tell me all your secrets because we're family after knowing them for five seconds. That's, the, that's a sign that someone is trying to manipulate you, that someone is trying to get you to let your guard down so that they can manipulate you. Um, yeah, so. Other signs, I, I wrote this list, I'm not even sure what order this is in, so it reminds me of other signs. Uh, uh, what about the, the, the secret that he told you about him? That he apparently <gasps> claims oh that he God. never, never, that he never even told his own daughter? Yeah, so uh, yeah, okay, so any of you guys having these like, uh, private conversations with this, this guy that think that you're the only one he's talking to because he's making you feel special and he's telling you that you're special. I'm going to tell you what he told me. So maybe if he's telling you the same thing, now you're going to know it's BS. If maybe <laughs> by chance that like I am the only person that he ever told this to, that's, that's probably crazy in itself. So he told me our second conversation, remember now I've met him 
two days ago. He no, knows like nothing about me. He told me that he's dying and has a year to live. He didn't tell me how he was dying, what he was dying of, how he knows. All he told me was that he was dying and that he has a year to live and that no one else knows, not even his daughter. I'm the only one in the whole wide world that knows. That in itself, my friends, is crazy. That's a huge red flag that this person is trying to manipulate you. You don't tell someone you just met two days ago, especially someone with a YouTube channel knows that you then you know that they have a YouTube channel, something super personal and private that you never even told your family. Like why would why wouldn't you be telling your family? Right. So why? the con conversation from hey, um, I have information on Emery Smith. Here's the documents, which are how not not much is there. To when when you ask him, are these the real documents? Who are you? answer is no where's the rest of the documents you know you they he blows off the question and then he starts talking about his personal life to you that you we have nothing to do with as if to emotionally tie us into his drama that, that we want nothing a part of is it isn't that an mm -hmm. um the basic manip ma manipulative thing is tell someone else, a stranger, a secret. Yes, 100% hitting it on the nose. That is emotional manipulation. That is like, I'm sure we'll, we'll get a list together and we'll read it later of like, um, what we were saying, like cult leader traits or whatever, the whole secret thing, I'm sure that's on there. You had, you had a conversation with him where uh he made you feel like something was your idea but it was his idea so um he said he kept saying oh i'm gonna post more documents i'm gonna add more documents have you read it and he's texting you and it's like they're posted online um and he's like yeah and i want to do a background check on emory smith and i'm thinking if you've known him for 20 years, why would you need to uh, do a background check and how he wanted to pay uh, for it all by himself. And um, also a military background on Emory Smith. He wasn't sure if he could get that. And uh, it brought a red flag because on some of the videos, he says Emory only, you know, was not in the military. Other cases, you know, he told me that he is. Um, I said, well, I'm here to help and uh, I'm a kind person. This is our first conversation. And, you know, I, I thought this is a struggling, you know, older man that was, you know, maybe used or abused by Emory Smith coming out and I was going, I was trying to support him, you know, emotionally and getting, spreading the word. John went on to say after uh, that he wants to pay for the $1,500 um, background check and he was going to pay it out of his own pocket because he wants to prove to the world that Emery is a liar and a fake and I said wow that you know a background check a check will help and I am you know I'll help him out any way I can John kept saying no 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 I'll uh, it's out of my own pocket it's my you know I want to he feels guilty maybe for his daughter, what she went through, but then he sends me his Venmo account right away after we spoke, you know, yeah. um, spoke. Again, it's, manip it's, it's emotional manipulation so that you think that it's your idea to give him your money, but it was really his idea because he guilted you into it. It's like someone telling you, oh yeah, I'm, I'm dying, you know, literally, <laughs> I'm dying and I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm homeless now and I can't eat and, and, um, uh, but I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And right, like, right, right. And you know, so he, 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 he obviously give them your money. 
he appealed to our kindness to our you know any normal person would say yeah of course i want to help you out ha help expose this or help help any way i can and then right away saying oh i don't need your help i can do it by myself but then sending you a screenshot of his venmo that's it like here if here here's the donation if he didn't give you his venmo it's more believable that he wants to do it on his own. If, if he really meant, I'm gonna do it on my own, I don't want your money, I don't want you to feel guilty because I am not trying to emotionally manipulate you, I'm just telling you what's going on. So no, I'm not going to give you my Venmo because I don't want your money. I'm just telling you, this is what I'm gonna be doing. But instead, he's like, tells you this like how terrible things are and then he gives you an opportunity to pay him no 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 it's fine it's fine it's fine but in case you want to pay me here's my venmo like right and just and uh, just the basics that john came out with saying that he knows all this stuff about emory um that emory did horrific things against his daughter and then the fbi the a Boulder Police Task Force was looking for Emory Smith, but yet he was able to run away. And John knows where to Las Vegas with a specific woman named um, Deborah, right? Deborah. And then, so he knows with where Emory is, yet the FBI, the Boulder Police, the IRS that are trying to catch Emory Smith for, you know, uh, financial crimes, they can't get a hold of him. Yeah. Yeah. But yet John he, knows where he is. And he tell you something about, like you asked him why he waited so long to talk about it, right? Yeah, that was another red flag is that um, he's known Emery Smith for 20 years. The last 10 years, his daughter was heavily involved uh, with him. And I asked him why. He said, well, my daughter had to get rid of a few things or get her life um, situated. Can I talk about the choking part? Can yeah, I talk you can about that? Talk about anything you want. Yeah. Well, on, on his first video, right, he mentions that Emory Smith choked his daughter. And then on the phone, John told me that he almost killed her, and which, which he corrected me. He said, no, not only choking, he almost killed her. I was shocked. That was our first conversation. I was like, oh my God, hurry up, get the background check. Who is this person that's choking your daughter and i still don't have any there's still no proof no police report no record of you know police report would be a great record we i still can't don't see that mm -hmm. from john and when i questioned him he made me look like i'm the mistrusting i'm the crazy one that's gaslighting right. so yeah, but and that's, you know, there's, there's like so much coming out now, <laughs> like, oh, we got it, and then this, and then this, and then this. Like, when people ask him uh, questions, perfectly legitimate questions, like, if he's trying to expose someone, don't you want to answer the questions? And instead, he just dismisses people and shames them for asking. Like, he treats people like they're stupid for asking. I already answered that. We're not going to rehash that because I already answered that and I proved that without a shadow of a doubt. Um, excuse me, no, you didn't. That's why they're asking the question because you didn't. And the stuff in the Dropbox, so let's touch on that for a second. The stuff in the Dropbox is a bunch of nothing. Like I'm not defending Emory Smith. I just wanna be clear about that. I think that a lot of these stories probably at least are partly true but there's no proof here so the, the point that we're talking about today is not whether or not emory smith is um full of it we'll talk about that in a different video right now we're talking about whether john is full of it so just because emory did something bad and john exposed the thing that he did bad doesn't make which is person. And, and it's not really bad. We don't know. It's just a financial company, you know, partnership disagreement, right? right? The, the on paper. Dropbox. Yeah, is, is that's the only thing of value in the Dropbox. Is it's it's litigation. Basically, people suing each other over who knows what, which John calls drama. And it doesn't, it doesn't prove, we don't know. We don't know two sides of the story. We just know that his name is on that document. We don't know what really happened. 
And uh, should we take his word for it? That's what he's asking us to do, to take his word for it that Emory Smith embezzled so much money. And he claims that he has all these documents, but when, when we look at it, when we have a lawyer friend that looks at it, no, it's just basic litigation. I, I wanna know it, where's, where's the real stuff? Where's the police reports, the arrest reports? Yeah, yeah. And if there are none, why didn't you call the cops? if it really happened, you know, and, and that's getting us into another point. But before that, just to, just to say that like the stuff in the Dropbox is a whole lot of nothing. It's a lot of screenshots of, it's a lot of the exact same case, just like different pages from the exact same civil case from his ex employer. And then like a bunch of screenshots of like people sending Emery a text. Not, not anything incriminating from Emery, but people sending Emery angry texts or sending Emery angry emails or sending a John, John an email that he didn't want to get and then writing back about how he wants nothing to do with Emery. Like, that and, proves and, nothing. And doxing Emery and some people that were involved in this case with their real names, their emails. Can you imagine yeah. that? And, yeah. Yeah. And if doxing everyone. If this is so serious and so uh, important, John doesn't make one video and say, here's the evidence. No, he keeps you tied in, like with a hook, like a manipulator saying, I'll provide more info. There's more info coming. And then he never gives it. Yeah. So is, is this a red flag or what? We thought he was yeah. honest. He was a... No. He, a father being honest, really scared for, you know, other women that he claims that were hurt by Emery, his daughter, almost, you know, choked to de death by Emery with two black eyes, two black eyes. I was appalled. And yet we, oh, it's uh, evidence is coming. Yeah. And then it never comes. And like, he's got like four expose videos on, on Emery and like, one of them, it, the entire video is just him reading an article about um, the, that little uh, skeleton thing that people were saying was an alien. That was a whole video. And then another video, he's like talking and then about halfway through he goes on off on a tangent about um, breakaway civilizations. It has nothing to do with Emory. It's like, he just titles it something that he knows people will click on and then never gives you anything of value. And what another red flag is that he refers to that little hand, uh, skeleton that looks about five inches on a combra, I, I believe it's called. He says, John claims that the first time Emery Smith showed, showed this little thing uh, to him, who claimed, uh, he claimed to be an alien, was 10 years ago, uh, maybe more, more, maybe 15, when his daughter was 14. Remember how he introduced his, his kids, his two daughters to Emory Smith. And John claims that he has great knowledge of 3D printing. And back then it was the new awesome thing. And John claims back then he knew it was a 3D printing of something. So if that's the, where's his claims back then? Like, hey, dude, this isn't real. You know, I work on 3D printers. I do that, I do that, I design. How can it different... be a 3D printing and also be genomically proven to be human? Explain, you know, like what, <laughs> what? Right, and John <laughs> claiming that he's open with his, uh, with his children, talking to them about ETs and this and that. As soon as you find that out, won't you want to tell your children, like, wait, I think this guy is a liar. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, I want to know that. And if John was so sure be, back then, did he, why didn't he make a big stink back there? Yes. You know, yes. Claiming that cl John claims he knows other insiders within this community, another red flag, right? And mm -hmm. he also claims that he's, in his video three or four, he claims that he knows four people with TS1 or higher clearance. Yeah. So yeah. Is, that, is, is that a person that, it, he's acting just like a person that wants to, like David Wilcock, who wants your money for something, who wants to tell you a secret. He's starting his own cult. He's, he's exactly like them. 
Exactly. He in video four, it was video four, and I posted the clip on Twitter today. How he's like, I I know it's basically he's saying literally saying he has his very own super secret insider whistleblowers. It's like you're trying to expose these people for their fake whistleblowers, and then at the same time you're saying that you're like exactly the same thing as they are. You can't, you have super secret insiders, but you can never tell the, anyone what, the, what their names are. You can't tell anyone who they are or what they, what they said to you, but you have special privileged information, so we should just blindly trust you because you're just a sweet old man trying to do the right thing and poor you you're dying of some mysterious disease that no one knows about just trust him and that's astonishing that's a huge red flag because in other videos john m claims that um that's how he's debunking Corey Good and everyone else that they don't have any clearances or they don't have an insider cannot uh what did you say insiders um don't deserve tv shows they deserve body bags or something like that I didn't hear that that in insiders uh that D David Wilcock and his insiders don't deserve you know they don't get a movie a studio to tape their interview and they get a body bag if they were to speak out up yet he goes on to oh, say yeah, yeah yeah meaning like if they were authentic then if they said anything they would get killed instead of right that they they won't even be seen on tv or on anywhere yet ts1 clearance and above that's his direct um direct statement from video number three Right. So this basically his argument is like, I know real insiders, not like your fake insiders. And like, just to prove it, I'm not going to tell you anything about them or who they are. So you just have to trust me. So uh, nothing else he said is provable. Nothing else he said, like he, everything he's said so far shows that he is fibbing at the very least, manipulating, stretching the truth fibbing, avoiding answering questions, evading things, um, going around in circles, deflecting, very, very manipulative, but just blindly trust them. So we started off, I started off as, as understanding a little better that uh, maybe Emory Smith isn't, uh, you know, doesn't have the right intentions in getting some factual proof. And I got sucked into um, by this man who claimed he didn't want money yet he sends me screenshots you know to send money to no real documentation just some random uh, lawsuits here and there um, no arrest records there were multiple times that Emery drove drunk acted drunk acted abusive towards you know family or his daughter no no proof of that so it, it's it's very frightening and to to John to claim that Emory is doing the, this to women all across the West Coast and other states like Las Vegas, Los Angeles. He names those women in the videos too, without their permission, yeah. you know, and if that's true, show us some evidence, show us, you know, who, at least it will speak volumes if we see a police report or uh, something that he claims is true. Yeah. And here's the, so here's the thing about Olivia, right? If, if he is Olivia's father, because we don't actually know, but he's saying, so he introduced his daughters. He said he contacted Emery. He mm -hmm. reached out to Emery and initiated contact. Then he introduced his daughters to Emery at 14. And at no point does he ever express remorse guilt shame for getting his 14 year old daughter involved with this guy and mm -hmm. uh, he he talks about it like when he was on the phone with me he talks about it like it's her fault and his fault so it's all his fault because it's all emory's fault because emory's a predator and it's all Olivia's fault because she was dumb and naive and young and in love and blah, blah, blah. It, it's victim blaming. It's like, yeah, she was 14. So you know that she's in contact with this guy for three years. There's no way. 
that you only found out that for three years she was in contact with Emery, who at the time I'm sure he was talking very highly of. Oh, I know this guy Emery who's a super secret insider and I'm special because as a narcissist do, you know, they whatever. <laughs> so, uh, and and they went to expos too. So John was very familiar with this community. He took his two daughters to other expos that Emery attended, you know, too. Yeah. And what what about his older daughter? How come his older daughter, um, two years, 16 year old, how come, what, what does she think? What does this, he, he believe in? How, what about their mom? Even though let's say he has disagreements right now with their mom or, or their divorce or whatnot, how does a mom feel when, when this is all happening to your daughter? Yeah. You know, if I was a mom, no matter what, if someone was, I am a mom, but if someone is choking my daughter and that person is famous, I would be on every post. I would say, here's the proof. Mm -hmm. Here's the police. Here's the black eyes. Here's the police proof. If that yes. person laid hands yeah. on my daughter. Yes. And I, I posted a poll on Twitter to prove that today. If, if your kid, if your daughter was being groomed, just groomed. No one choked. She was being groomed by some guy would you what would you do would you do nothing like john apparently did for years and, and he doesn't talk about it he if for he claims that he's known him first video 20 years but 10 years were really out of hand but what what did he do did he call 911 are there police reports are there any photos of the black eyes two black eyes that olivia had he, he says in one of the videos that in 2016 was when he told Olivia that Emery was a fraud and she should stop talking to him. But so hold on. Hold on. That, oh, really? Just in 2016? Yes. Oh my gosh, then that's a huge red flag. Why would he say he knew that he was a fraud since they met? At yes. When you have a 14-year-old child who's spent three years talking to this guy well, he's there was something about three years where he was growing grooming her yeah when from he 14 to um i think it's three or, uh, I so think it's, until she was legal right 17 yeah like 18 or whatever like maybe she was 14 going on 15 so for like three or years or so he was grooming her on email until she became legal right so Correct. In videos, daughter, how do you not know your daughter is talking to this guy that you introduced her to for three years when supposedly all she knows is that you think that he's kosher until 2016? Right. Won't you want to turn around and talk to your daughter and, and, and ask her and give her the proof? You know, 14 year olds aren't, aren't stupid. Just say, this is how we do three printing. This is my job. I don't think that the little piece of alien is, is real. You know, if, if that's true. Like if your daughter was being groomed at 14 and for three years, he knew about it is what I'm saying. And he did nothing. Like he didn't call, that's why I posted the, the, the poll on Twitter, because what do you do if that happens? Do you just go, oh, what am I going to do? She's young and she's in love, because that's how he's talking. She's young and she's law in love and she's stupid because she's young. So it's her fault because she's stupid and young. Oh, what am I going to do? Or do you call the cops? Do you move, call the cops, you know, bust the guy's door in, do whatever you have to do to get this grown ass man away from your 14 year old daughter. Is right. Because under, under a statute, that person is over the age, quite a big age difference. Yes. Like that's, that that's is a, predatory. If that, that was is, really going down, that is predatory. It's illegal. It's so dangerous. wait, wait. What you're saying is if John knew at, four, at 17 years old that for three years they've been speaking, this guy has been, is a liar and a big age gap, how could you not say, wait a second, I need to call some authorities, make a report, this is not okay. He's a liar, he's been quietly behind my back telling bad things about me to the daughter. That's predatory. It's like one on one. That's right. If you, if you cared about your daughter, if you weren't a psychopath, if you weren't a narcissist, if you actually had empathy and compassion and loved your kids, you would lose your shit and do something to help your daughter, to save her, to get her away from this predator. 
that's what I would assume for most people. You know what I mean? Uh, so, actually, actually, not to be speculative, but that's what I, my mom did. I was dating a person that was uh, over the age. I was 16 and he was over 18. My mom had a cow. She was, she was, uh, she had to meet the guy. She had to know everything. My mom really, she basically stalked me is what I'm saying. Because my mom knew that something might go wrong because in, in, you know, everything was good, but she, she was a fighter for her daughter. Yeah. Good. Good. That's what uh, she's supposed to do. On, there's another in, in um there's another video where John claims that Olivia has worked managed uh, Emory Smith's many many companies, and she figured out that he embezzled, lied, and is you know doing some shady things. Yet Olivia chose to be with Emory, right? She was she's in love. She chose Emory, and she's dedicated to him. This and that, right? But then when um, Jesse or um, someone questions him at the, on the video of four, John answers some questions from commenters, and I believe his name is um, Jesse. He says, wouldn't it make Olivia a contributor to lying on all the videos with Emery Smith? Right? Since she was with Emery over 10 years, she helped him with all these companies, all these um, allegedly, you know, lies in fake companies. And John says, no, um, she, Emery has the great ability to control and manipulate people. So I mean, on, on, legally, on, legally, she would be a, co a co collaborator. Yeah, yeah, she would, she would definitely contribute to all of the finance, you know, decisions if she ran the companies, if she knew what's going on. She was his partner. She was his partner for many, many years, many different companies. Right. And I'm sure that, you know, it looks like Emery is a manipulative person. So I have absolutely no proof of this, okay? But from whatever, all little pieces, if you're a grown ass man talking to a 14 year old girl for three years, if that happened, something's wrong with you, okay? So yeah, it's possible if that actually was true, that Emery is a very manipulative person and did groom her and manipulate her into whatever she got involved with. That doesn't mean that she's still not legally responsible for being a part of it. Right. What if the, what if uh, she, those, you know, the, the monies that are missing, you know, is she driving a brand new car? You know, is she, you, you know, spe is a spender? We don't know that. Where is her story? John promises her story. If this is, if this guy is a psychopath who hurts and chokes women, any, any, you know, and you have your father and hopefully your parents asking you, please, and he's a famous person, please stand up for what is, what is right. I had to do that in my life. It was really embarrassing, but I knew it was the right thing to do in order to prevent, you know, John calls, oh, I'm here to help our community. That's how you help you ask your children, please come forward, or at least give us a police report with, with black eyes and, you know, accusations of being choked. Not just that, but, you know, if you have your daughter's best interest in mind, which you should, like, out of all of this, okay, you know Emery is a con artist, you know he's a manipulator and a white, white beater and all this stuff, you're still Olivia's father, if this is true. Olivia should be your number one priority above anything else. Number one. That means if it's in her best interest to not say a thing about Emery, then you don't say a thing about Emery. But even though, and he's told me, I don't know if he said it in a video, I think he has, but he's told me that supposedly Olivia has been very upset with him about the fact that he's putting these videos up. So despite the fact that it's upsetting her, and then he's like, oh, well, she's going through a very hard time emotionally and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, so let her, like, let her heal. Don't add to her trauma by going online and, and airing all her dirty laundry and telling everybody about how she was a stupid young kid getting groomed by a predator. Like, she's so dumb. She got groomed by a predator and uh like her emotional state and how she was arrested and like why are you doing that so you're not making it easier on her 
So what you're saying is that he has uh, no respect for Emery, but yet when Olivia is is against this, he still goes on to expose Emery, yet not give us any criminal yes. proof. What I'm saying is that his priority is revenge. So whatever happened behind the scenes, that he's mad at Emery now, that he has to go on and like maybe they didn't let him in, in the club or, or that he wants money or whatever, like supposedly he just got divorced. So that's why he's living in his car and wherever he's living. So if he just got divorced, it means a couple things. One, maybe he's angry and wants to get revenge or has to has needs somewhere to focus his anger and or he needs a new narcissistic supply since his wife and daughter are no longer there to feed off of he needs new sources of supply and that's what he's getting from the community so these are options and i i could see like they they might have been working since emory is all this manipulator they might been working on a deal together and it didn't go through mm -hmm. and now after all these years all this time of almost killing your daughter john decides to you know state such things yeah. alleged such things yeah so what i'm saying is that his number one priority is not his daughter like a normal healthy emotionally feeling emp empathetic compassionate human being would be Instead, his priority is his ego and his revenge and attention. That's his priority, not his daughter. He doesn't give a shit about his daughter. His daughter, uh, supposedly, if from his own words, his daughter is emotionally suffering. While he's making it worse, he's not making it easier for her to move on with her life. How is, like... How is it easier for her to get, to build a, a career, get a job or, or, you know, move on financially from that situation when he's going on the internet, talking crap about her, telling every, the whole world about her, her police record. Right. And all he had to do is block her name off and release the police records about Emery being, uh, you know, uh, a killer, almost a killer to, you know, choke his daughter. That's all you have to do. You can remain anonymous. You don't have to speak about it. The documents, the, the criminal reports would speak for themselves. And, and he wanted, he wants to do his own events. He keeps talking about that, his own truthful yeah tell disclosure. us about that so tell us about what happened with that conversation like how that came into the conversation at all well he knows that um i have connections with the um event centers and like hotels and big metrodomes and he said he wants to do an, a big truthful disclosure not like Wilcock and all these liars he wants to do a truthful disclosure basically start his own group or channel or you name it so I was surprised to hear that that was the first conversation we're talking about his daughter being almost choked to death by Emery Smith and then he turns it around to oh yeah by the way I want to start my own events I want to you know talk about UFO topics yeah Huge red flag. Like, what? And, where is and, and, and does he not know how they cost thousands of dollars? And who's going to pay for all for all of that? You're going to turn into a person that's going to charge money, a lot of money, because they're expensive. Yeah. Not just that, but when you're going, when you're doing something where your focus is supposedly, my daughter was hurt, and now I'm going to, um, you know, expose the people that hurt her so they can't hurt anybody else. Plus also, let's do some business, you know, like what? How can I profit off of this too? Right. We only reached out because we were horrified by the videos, by the statements that came out of this person's mouth mm -hmm. about, about choking the daughter, black eyes, uh, multiple uh, GUIs that he never got arrested for, you know, about um, getting his daughter arrested and uh, for, for, uh, possession of drugs when they were not hers they were emery's where all these arrest records were i just um we were horrified that such a person keeps and and there's a list of women that he apparently did this to and that john names by name and i'm sure if if uh, they're easy to find but it's it's hor horrific no 
no real documents, just switch the conversation to disclosure and business and let's do these events together. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember if we finished this thought before, but I remember that we were saying how he supposedly waited so long to come out about this because the FBI was investigating him. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. So I, that was my first question. I said, wow, you've known this for 10 years. And, um, and he tried to choke your daughter. He goes, no, he almost killed my daughter. And I go, okay, two black eyes. And I said, wow, what made you wait so long? How long was that ago? And he says, well, he didn't want to tip Emery off as if Emery won't know that his almost father-in-law would be pissed at him for the last 10 years and do whatever he can to get this guy in jail. John claims that he wanted the FBI to do the lead to Boulder task force to catch Emery first before he exposes him. And still to this day, Emery isn't arrested. He's not, you know, fined by IRS, you know, FBI and you name it. Yeah, exactly. So you, you're waiting for him to be arrested. And then one day, what, you're just tired of waiting. So you're like, well, they didn't get him yet. So I'm just gonna do my thing anyway, so that he runs and the FBI doesn't get him. Another thing that is this irking me. So a lot of the stuff in the Dropbox, like I said, is like completely nothing. It's just a lot of him saying things or him sending texts, him sending emails, like it's not evidence. On his YouTube channel as well, he's doing the exact same thing. So he keeps posting these videos of him writing an email, of him filling out an application form, of him asking uh, Beth Wilcock for her financial papers and then using like uh, a law like the, the legal code or whatever for the IRS or something like that. And it's completely not relevant. Like if you look that law up, it, he has absolutely no right to request her financials. He's not the IRS. He's not, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like it, imagine a, you get an email from some random person and they're like, give me your financials. No. So what he's, he alleges to John is saying, oh, I'm going to get these documents, financials, and what you see is just an email requesting from them from the very same person as if it's from John's side, John pretends side, pseudo documents, nothing from another side, but just LOL, it's a fake email, you know? Yeah. But it, it's just uh, boggles my mind and multiple documents speak for themselves and we put this time in to let other people know that these are extraordinary claims by John, not supporting by any extraordinary evidence. His favorite, favorite word or statement is extraordinary accusations must be, must go along with documentation. Yeah, he says that a lot, like facts. I'm about facts and I'm about documents. If it's documented, was your video documented? Do you have any proof? And then he has nothing. He's got this empty promise of what is to come and telling people that he's already proved things that he hasn't proved. I was, uh, I was more concerned about, you know, safety of women being around these men and he just turns it around about him. It's all about him. It's all about him. He supposedly started out to um, expose Emery for his daughter's sake. And then a couple of videos in goes on a tangent about how special he is and, and with his super secret insiders and uh, a breakaway civilization. And then starts making videos about David Wilcock and everybody else. It's like, he just went, he goes all over the place. He's like, what do people want? What's going to get me attention and subscribers? And then he goes in that direction. And ask for supporters. Yeah. Thank you for your support, for your support. And, um, uh, to follow him on this great, you know, his, his own version of exposing something that we would never see because there's no documentation. It's just his word, just his words, his, his extreme, extraordinary allegations of being, of a daughter being choked by a big six foot something huge guy. I've never met the guy, but to me, that's scary. That is scary. Yeah. And what's also scary is that John, if that's his real name, is infiltrating a community of people who are um, predisposed to believe 
his stories. That's how they got involved in the first place with people like Emery, because we have a history of abuse. We're survivors of abuse and manipulation and gaslighting. And so as we're recovering, until we're fully recovered, it's hard to tell if someone is lying or not. We're, we're also very susceptible to want to believe people because we're projecting. And if we have compassion and empathy, we make the assumption that other people have compassion and empathy. And if we wouldn't lie, we make the assumption that they wouldn't lie. And so we just, we want to believe. And he's infiltrating that kind of a community of people who are susceptible to believing his stories, weaving his way into their brains. And soon enough, he's going to be asking people for money. I am so glad I reached out to you, Natasha, and it was so kind of you to write me back because you didn't know who I was. You have no idea, uh, you know, if, if you were doxxed or who I am, if I'm a real person or someone hiding behind. Uh, and, and it was so nice of you to talk to me and to figure we we discussed our stories, our our personal accounts of John and we figured out that wow something isn't adding up if it wasn't for us talking together and not being afraid to you know reach out and send an email I would have been duped in you know thousands of dollars to help this guy who you know sends you his Venmo or his bank account yeah I probably would have been manipulating in manipulated into doing work for him or doing whatever for him if we hadn't had that conversation where we're like, well, he told me this. Well, he told me this. Well, that right, because, me. yeah, we're trying to find the facts. Just get to the bottom of it. Okay, this guy isn't a good guy. Let's just move on. Emery Smith, yep, I knew something was up. Uh, here's the documents, the police reports. Fine. Um, thank God we weren't sucked in, moved on. No, we were, he was trying his best to talk us into working with him and turning in, in this all into <laughs> us respecting and worshiping him in a way or following him or you know, I, I'm, I'm afraid of cults. They come in and pe manipulative people come in different shapes or sizes. Yeah. Well, hopefully we helped people uh, at least question what's going on. No matter what we said today, no matter what we do, there's still going to be people that believe him and follow him. That's just the nature of the world. Hopefully we've given people a heads up so that they don't get doxxed and they don't get um, sucked into the brainwashing and that they don't give me money. Um, in the description below, I'm going to have a link to some videos about communal narcissists um, and what, whatever other information that you guys might uh, need or, or what would be good for you guys to really understand what I see and get a better perspective, a bigger perspective of what's going on so that you can protect yourself and make your own decisions also you don't have to believe me just because i'm saying this you know you don't have to believe us we're telling you our perspective and our experience and you are free to believe and think whatever you want if you've had any experiences with john or private conversations with him that maybe sound exactly the same as the ones that we've had and you want to share that story in the comments please do um, do you have anything else that you want to add? I just want to thank you for talking to me and um, helping me expose this, these red flags that, that I was, um, I was so concerned. I, I didn't know who to talk to because no one could relate to what's happening. And you, um, you helped me understand the whole process and compare notes and compare stories and like a big lying fake puzzle that we had to put together to yeah. to step away from this um from this evil person well i had fun talking to you too i'm really glad that we met so thank yes, you for being too. on the uh, on my channel and You're thank welcome. you guys for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment if you feel like joining the conversation thank you and good night